Hey everyone, so I wanted to get on here tonight just briefly to talk to you about um, something that I know uh, it, it gets neglected in a lot of our lives and it gets neglected because, you know, I, I fully understand that everybody's got their own lives, they've got obligations, they've got responsibilities and, and things of that sort and they, they can't just, you know, drop everything to go pray sometimes but that's why we have to get uh, to a point where we say to ourselves okay you know I want to make sure that I'm setting aside a certain amount of time each day to pray um, and really pray for the condition of the things that we see around us right because the fact of the matter is this the Bible says that the road to hell is broad and many are on it okay the road to hell is broad and many are on it the road to destruction but the road that leads to eternal life it says is is difficult and it's narrow and few find it so that being said we know that there is a remnant the, the bride of christ the church the end times church is a remnant and so we have an obligation because our prayers carry weight we have an obligation to intercede for our brothers and sisters across the globe who are going through persecution we have an obligation to intercede for those who are not praying for themselves, maybe they don't have a relationship with their Heavenly Father, maybe they don't know that they can, maybe they're stuck in dry, dead, powerless religion that changes nothing and no one, which is why someone can go to church for 30 years and never be transformed by the renewing of their mind and never die to their self and never deny their self and never pick up their cross and follow Him. And I say that to say this, um, I'm going to share with you some uh, visions that I had during my personal prayer time yesterday that were quite emotional. Um, but first I want to read to you from James, James chapter 5, the New King James Version, starting at verse 15 through verse to, verses uh, 15 to 20. And the prayer of faith will save the sick, and the Lord will raise him up. And if he has committed sins, he will be forgiven. Confess your trespasses to one another and pray for one another, that you may be healed. The effective fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. There are other versions that say that the prayer of the righteous is powerful and effective. Verse 17, Elijah was a man with a nature like ours and he prayed earnestly that it would not rain and it did not rain on the land for three years and six months. And he prayed again and the heaven gave rain and the earth produced its fruit. Brethren, if anyone among you wanders from the truth and someone turns him back, let him know that he who turns a sinner from the error of his way will save a soul from death and cover a multitude of sins. I want to rest on that for just a second. That also can be done. You can turn a sinner from the error of his way, not just by rebuking and correcting them and sharing the word with them face to face, person to person, but you can also intercede for them through prayer. Job 22.30 says this, He who is not innocent will be saved by the cleanness of your hands. And the only reason why we have any cleanness of hands is because our righteousness which was filthy rags has been we, there's been an exchange that has happened so we were given robes of righteousness we took on the righteousness of God the righteousness of Christ and handed over our filthy rags hallelujah 
So I'm going to share with you what happened during my personal prayer time yesterday. So I was praying in tongues and I was thinking in my mind of some of the things that I wanted to pray for. And one of the things I was thinking about was praying for the sick in the hospitals. And while I was praying, now all of a sudden I see this image of an, an illuminated spine that was crooked. And I knew instinctively that it was being healed. It was being healed. It was being straightened. Then I saw an image of a heart. And the heart had an irregular beat it wasn't a normal beat and I heard it going back to a, a normal sounding beat as I'm continuing to pray and trying not to get emotional I saw an alcoholic holding a bottle in a brown paper bag like we see so often in homeless communities pouring out the bottle of liquor onto the ground I saw a, a young teenager uh, a boy in a hospital bed and it, it looked like he had been stabbed quite a few times and um, I knew it was Jesus that came over to this young man's bed and he touched the wounds he touched the wounds and they were like they were mending they were being healed they were closing up I saw a person about to stick a needle in their arm and again, I instinctively knew this was Jesus that had entered into the scene and he took the needle and he pulled it out of his arm. And then he touched this man's face and tears were just coming down his cheek. Now I'm crying. I saw uh, another person in a hospital room and I saw Jesus like touch the head of the man and I heard the man say, the voices are gone. And he was like so excited. I saw an EKG that was completely flatlined all of a sudden start to move again. I saw a man being taken off an oxygen mask and breathing on his own. I saw a setting where there was a child with... Um, dolls in the room you know how they uh, play act or they reenact abuse with a counselor it was that type of setting and I saw Jesus again not his face but I knew it was him leaning in to this child and whispering in their ear and I saw the words it's not your fault I saw a gang member and I saw this man literally hand his gun over to Jesus and start to cry as he touched his face. He cupped his face with both hands. Continuing to pray and sobbing, bawling like a baby. I saw a cell block and this blinding light that was entering into some of the cells. And I saw different scenarios. I saw uh, men shielding their eyes from its brightness. I saw one bowed to the floor, face to the floor. I saw another one holding on to the bars, but he had his head lowered. And I saw another one on his, his knees with his head bowed and his hands raised. As I'm continuing to pray, I saw it looked like a ship with these storage containers. And it looked like, they, they didn't look like ordinary policemen. It looked like special ops or a SWAT team was, was going through the corridors of the ship where the containers were and ordering that they be opened up and there were children inside the containers. I saw the word identity in rainbow letters and the words them, him, her, and they being tossed into a large fire. I saw pride flags hanging on the front of churches catch on fire. 
then I saw this mountain. It reminded me of like Mount Rushmore, you know, how they have the, the presidents carved in. So it was a mountain with the word stronghold carved into the mountain in big capital letters. And it was falling like dust. Then I saw the word religion was raised above this disintegrating mountain. I saw what looked like Buddhist temples. And as I was praying for God to pour his spirit out on people that were uh, deceived, in, are deceived in false religion, I could see that they were having visions of Jesus in front of them. And it looked like at one point, like the floors and the walls were shaking in this place. It looked like a temple or a mosque. And I saw the words, the fear of the Lord, fear of the Lord, sorry, not the fear of the Lord. And I heard the Lord say, the fear of me will enter their mosques and temples. As I'm continuing to pray, I, I saw these words almost like floating in the air, homeless, trauma, addiction, torment, perversion, mental illness. So I saw people in homeless communities and they were bound in these iron cuffs and they had a chain that ran from wrist to wrist. And they were lined up in a formation and they all had their arms out like this. And there was lightning coming down from the heavens, like breaking these bonds off of their wrists, one by one by one. I saw Jesus put his hands on their heads and appear to be praying while I was praying. And then I saw what looked like a pile that it was like being thrown into a heap. So I saw burnt spoons, hypodermic needles, crack pipes, that kind of thing, being thrown into a pile like a heap of trash. And I saw all these people that were still dressed in raggedy clothes getting ready to be baptized in a church. I say that to say this, the Lord wanted me to share this with you. Why? Because we have no idea sometimes how far reaching our prayers can be, how impactful they can be, not because you have any power or might, but because of the spirit of God who now dwells on the inside of you. And when you are praying in the spirit, when you are praying in tongues, that is the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of the living God, praying perfect prayers out of you. And of course, he knows better than us what is needed. But you can also pray with your mind. And it's actually better to do it that way because when we vocalize our prayers, and I do believe this, I haven't received 100% confirmation on it, but I'm leaning towards Satan cannot hear what you think when you are a born again child of God Satan cannot hear the prayers that you are rehearsing in your mind but he can hear what you vocalize and not that we're supposed to ever be in a place of fear I wouldn't want to live my life that way God did not give us that spirit however there are times when I just want to go all out and I want to pray for all kinds of things. And I'd rather not let the devil know or give him a heads up about what I'm praying about. So if you have a hard time setting aside time to pray or finding time, maybe you have a lot of distractions. Um, you know, I, I know for a fact that when you go to open up your Bible and start meditating on the word, when you start to um, study to show yourself approved in any way, whether it be in school or 
or you're just trying to find time to pray, that's when the enemy will try to distract you with everyone and everything that he can, but you can't let him. You have to set a time for God and stick to that time and make sure that everyone understands this is my time with the Lord. This is my time with the Lord. This is the time that I have set aside to be with the Lord, to pray. And unless it's an emergency, there needs to be no interruptions. Because we are a remnant. We are on a narrow path. And we need to be interceding for the people who are not praying for themselves. Because a lot of us today are alive because somebody interceded for us. Somebody stepped in and said, that girl is in trouble. That, that young man is in trouble. They're going down a bad road. They're making a lot of really not so good decisions and hanging around with the wrong people. And people you didn't even know personally we're praying for your salvation and that's how we have to be we have to be we have to be faithful with what we have been given and we've been given a responsibility of intercession we've been given a responsibility there's a lot of horrible things that are happening in this world right now the darkness is all pervasive and we need to pray against it every chance we get